Hi there, smart car owners. Today in your 2017 Smart for Two, we're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to install Roadmaster's Direct Connect baseplate. There's five main components you'll need when flat towing your vehicle behind your motorhome. You'll need your base plate, which is your connection point for your tow bar that is installed on your vehicle. You'll need your tow bar, which is the connection between your vehicle and your motorhome. You'll also need your safety cables, which is a supplemental connection in addition to your tow bar. You'll need your diode wiring, which takes all the lighting signals from your motorhome, transfers it to the lights at the back of your vehicle, so that way everybody behind you knows your intentions when going down the road. If you don't want to go with diode wiring, you could also go with magnetic lights and wiring, which operates similarly, it just doesn't use the existing lights on your vehicle. And you'll also need your supplemental braking system. This will apply the brakes in your vehicle when you hit the brakes in your motorhome, using the existing brakes on the car to help it come to a safe stop. This is what your base plate's gonna look like when it's installed. The arms are gonna pass through your bumper here, and you're also going to have places for your safety chains and your wiring right down here in the front, all behind the honeycomb portion of your grill. Now, what I really like about this base plate is that these arms are removable. By pulling the pin, we can then twist the arm and slide it out. Now we don't have anything we need to worry about, our knees bumping on, our shins when we pass by, and it gives us a more factory look. You can see here there is some modifications you will have to make to the fascia in order to accommodate the base plate, but it provides you with your connection point to hook up your tow bar, and it blends in fairly well with the black powder coat finish. Next to the arm here, you've got your breakaway switch because unlike some of the other base plates out there, Roadmaster has provided a mounting location for your breakaway switch, which makes it convenient when you're adding your braking system. They've also added a mounting location for your wiring, so when you're adding your lighting and as well as your braking system or charge wires, you've got a connection point for your wiring to mount up, and then it's also tucked up nicely underneath your license plate, so it kind of keeps it hidden and it makes everything nice and convenient. Now when you're ready to attach your tow bar, since this is the Direct Connect base plate, any of the Roadmaster tow bars will hook directly to it without any type of adapters. So our arm here will simply line up in between the Direct Connect portion. The pin will slide through the base plate as well as the tow bar. And then on the other side, we'll line up the pin holes and then we can lock it in place. We'll repeat this on the other side. Once we've got them both connected, we can hook up our safety chains on our vehicle side there. On your motorhome side, your safety cables, you want to ensure that they are crossed left to right to create a cradle. So in the event of a catastrophic disconnect, it will keep your components up off the pavement from digging in. And then we can hook up our wiring. And then you also want to hook up the tether for your breakaway cable. Now that we're completely hooked up between our vehicle and our motorhome, we can place our vehicle into tow mode and we're ready to hit the road. We'll begin our installation by removing the hood. You'll have release latches on each side. You'll want to pull those out and that will release the hood. When you flip it up, you'll find straps on the back side. The straps on the back side are held in by four bolts. We're going to be using a 10 millimeter socket to remove these four bolts. And now we can get our foot a little bit further off. We just need to disconnect our washer nozzle. And that is most likely easiest done here on the hood. You could also do it further down here at the 90 degree elbow. You just give it a good tug to get it off. If you're having a difficult time, you can spray a little bit of silicone on there and that can help it slide off a little bit easier. Now that we've got everything disconnected from the hood, we can set this aside where it won't get damaged. Next, we're going to be removing the bolts from the top of our fascia here. But before you remove the bolts, it's a good idea to get all the hoses out of the way. So you'll see you've got some clips here. You can just pull those clips up. If you need some assistance, you could also use a flat bladed screwdriver or a trim panel remover tool. And we want to come down here and our coolant reservoir, we want to make sure we disconnect the hose from that. We can leave the clips on the fascia when taking these off, just take the hoses out of them. 
they just pull out of there. Now that we've got everything disconnected from it, we can remove the bolts that run along the back side. There's four of them, and we're going to use a 10 millimeter socket to remove each one. The support brace on the driver's side that was held in with one bolt, to remove that, pull up on the bottom and this will flip it down to unlatch it here at the top and we're just going to set this aside. We're now on the driver's side just in front of the tire where our fascia meets our fender here. On this seam you'll have a bolt there we'll need to remove. We'll be using a 10 millimeter socket just like above. You may need a swivel like I've got here in order to get the clearance to get in there. And we'll just take this bolt out here on this side and then we're going to repeat that on the other side. And then still on your driver's side in front of the tire at the bottom of your fascia, you'll have another bolt here. We're going to remove that using a T25 Torx socket. There's one on the other side as well that we'll be taking out. We're now underneath the vehicle at the front and there are seven bolts we'll need to remove. So starting on our driver's side here, the first bolt we'll need to take out is the Torx head bolt there. We'll be using a T30 Torx socket for this bolt. There's one just like it on the opposite side. And then we're going to switch now to a 10 millimeter socket to remove the five bolts going all along across the bottom. There's three in the center and there's one near each of those Torx bolts that we just took out. So we're going to take all of these out as well. And while it may not look like it, if you come forward towards the front of the vehicle, there's two more bolts here. These also do have to come off in order to release your fascia. We've now got all of our hardware loose so we can pull our fascia off. We're going to start on one side and peel it off. You'll want to pull kind of upward and out at the same time. And it will just pop off and release like that. Once you've got one side popped off, I like to stop at that point, get the other side popped off. And then you can come to the center and start rocking it out. You'll have to pull up here on the top piece because you have your got a stud there, there's a little peg here, so you just gotta lift it over those pieces. Now that we've got the front tipped back, we want to check for any electrical connectors that we've got. So there's nothing connecting to the vehicle here, so let's head over to our passenger side and we can see here that we are connected here. We'll press in on the release tab here at the bottom and then give it a pull and it'll come right out. You can see that release tab located right here. Once you've got everything disconnected, we can set this aside where it won't get damaged. With our fascia out of the way, we have wiring that runs across the bumper beam here. This wiring needs to be removed from the beam. So we're going to use our trim panel tool to pop up all the plastic inserts that is holding our wires down. And you may also have crash sensors here on the back side. We want to disconnect those as well. They have a small release tab similar to the one that we had when we pulled our fascia off. You want to press on that and then pull the connector off. And here you can see the release tab there. And we can just take this, I'm just going to tuck it up behind the headlight so it's out of my way. And we'll reconnect it before we put our fascia back on. We're now going to go to our wheel wells again. There are a couple fasteners we're going to need to take off to get a little more play out of this wheel well. So if you pull up out away from the tire, you'll actually find the fastener that I'm talking about way up in here back behind the wheel. This will disconnect by just unscrewing it. 
It has flat surfaces on each side and you can just take it out by hand. And then if we take our fender liner here, the outer edge, and we follow it up to where it meets our fender, there's another fastener here we're gonna need to remove. This one doesn't unscrew, it's actually just a push pin. Take your trim panel remover tool, go behind it, and then this will just pop out of there. We're now gonna remove this fastener and the other thumb screw fastener we took off on our fender liner on the opposite side as well. We can now remove our bumper beam there are three bolts on each side, two at the top, one at the bottom. We're going to remove the bolts using a 16 millimeter socket. And I normally leave one bolt in on each side, so that way the bumper beam doesn't fall off. But if you look here, this has a small tab that'll hold it up, so we can go ahead and take out all the bolts on each side, and we don't have to worry about it dropping down. We're gonna take this off. You'll see the louver is gonna come with it. So after you've removed it, you'll wanna come on this side here, on the passenger side, and disconnect the electrical connector. It's just like the other connectors that we had been removing. So you just press it on the tab, and then pull it off. Now on our passenger side only, those tabs that we had that held our bumper beam up while we took the bolts out, we're gonna knock this tab into that hole. The tab we just knocked in, if we come straight down from that, the bottom of our frame here, you'll see a bolt that's going through the black subframe here. We're gonna remove this bolt on the passenger side using an 18 millimeter socket. We only want to take out the passenger side at this time. We'll now need to take all the wiring that's located on the side of the subframe here and get it disconnected so we can slide our base plate between the frame and the wiring. We don't want to pinch our wiring. So we're just gonna disconnect all that wiring. A flat bladed screwdriver or a trim panel remover tool make it easier to get all these various plastic pins popped out of the frame. And we don't really need to take the pin out here at the top, but uh, just to make it easier and give me a little bit more room to move my wiring out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and take it off. The goal is to just make sure we don't pinch any wires when we put our base plate bracket on. So there we go, that should give us plenty of room now. We can now take the base plate bracket and put it in place on our passenger side. You want to make sure you've got the correct side, so your front plate here with the three holes at the top is going to have the side plate on the same side as your tire. So it's going to sit on just like this. This is going to be on the outside of the frame. Now you'll have some studs there you'll see. Those are going to line up with the holes that exist in your bracket. And it will kind of just sit there. I don't really recommend just leaving it there. It might fall. We'll then take our factory subframe bolt. We're going to go in through the bottom, through our bracket, up into our subframe, and then reinstall it. Now. I'm only going to thread it up just to where it's a little bit loose, then I'm going to stop. And then I'm going to take our bumper beam bolts that we had removed, and I'm just going to put them in just, you know, just a turn, just to ensure that all of our holes are going to still line up. Now that I've got that in place, we can go back and tighten this back down. Now that we've got the bracket in place, the studs that are poking through the holes on the side, there will be one hole on the side that doesn't have a stud poking through it. We're gonna use a half inch drill bit. We're gonna use our bracket as a template and then drill straight on through into the frame here. We're then gonna be placing some red Loctite on the bolt that's gonna go through that hole we're using the slightly longer bolts that come in our kit. Place a lock washer on it as well. And with the red Loctite, we're gonna be using that on all the hardware from this point forward. This is gonna go through the hole that we just drilled out into the frame. 
and we're going to thread it onto the handle nut that comes in your kit. So you may have to bend the wire on the handle nut to make it easier to get it up in there. And you just want to line this up with your bolt and thread it right in. And then we're going to go back and tighten it down with a 19 millimeter socket. Once you've got that tightened down, we can break off the end of our handle nut. The easiest way I found to do this is to use a pair of side cutters, grab the wire with the side cutters, and then actually just bend it back and forth and it'll cut really quickly like that. Once you've got that snipped off, we can take the bolts out that we had installed here. We were just using these as alignments for a temporary while we were getting those other bolt drilled out and tightened down. So we'll use our 16 millimeter to take those back out. And then we're gonna repeat this on the opposite side, the exact same steps to get this bracket installed over on the driver's side. We now got our bumper beam here that we had removed with our louver here on the bottom. We're gonna be taking this off, but before you take it off, we're gonna take out the center louver. To do that, go ahead and just grab it kind of towards the center and pull outward on it. This is, it's gonna flex a little and the little tab at the end is gonna pop out. Over on the other side, you'll want to use a trim panel tool to gently pry it out until it pops off there. We can then set this aside. We won't be reinstalling it. We'll then flip our bumper beam upside down, revealing the bolts for our louver here. There's one of these bolts located on each side. We're going to take them out with a 10 millimeter socket. Now we are gonna be reinstalling this, but we need to get the bumper beam on first, so we're just gonna temporarily set that aside. We can now take our bumper beam, set it back into position. We're gonna use the factory hardware to reattach it onto the vehicle. We did Loctite these bolts, just like the rest of our new hardware. Once we've got one on each side, It'll hold itself up, making it easier to install the rest of the hardware. Then we'll tighten them back down with a 16 millimeter socket. On your lower air dam, just below your bumper beam, we'll need to make a small notch in this area. So I've gone ahead and marked it out and we're just gonna be using some tin snips to cut it. Tin snips work great on the plastic, on the rubber part here. You might actually be better off just using a little bit of scissors to get started, but it will cut it. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. Before we place our next component on, it's easier to access the bolts, so we're gonna go back and torque all of our bolts now to the specifications found in our instructions. We'll now take our crossbar. We're gonna slide it between the brackets that we had just installed. And then on, from the outside going in, we're gonna slide the shorter bolts that come in our kit through. I'm gonna do the top one. Doesn't really matter which one you do first. Once you've got it slid through on the opposite side, we're gonna be placing a lock washer, and then we'll follow that up with a nut. Once you've got one started on each side, it'll hold itself up, making it easier to install the rest of your hardware. Now we can go back and tighten down all that hardware using a 19 millimeter socket and wrench. You will likely need an extension and a swivel in order to get in there to tighten these bolts down. And for your upper bolt, it may be necessary to use two wrenches to, in order to tighten it down. And then we'll torque them to the specifications found in our instructions. We can now put our louver housing back on, but the shroud that goes around it here is gonna be in the way. 
So to remove that, you'll want to slide the housing this direction and the cover here, the outer rim, that way, which will allow the, them to separate here at the top. You can see we've got this one already here, already separated. So you just got to slide those over and then you can pull them out. We're just going to work our way down, taking them off as we go. There are some on the bottom as well. And once you've got it all the way slid off, we can set that aside. We will not be reinstalling that portion, just this portion here. And then we're just gonna slide it back in. You kind of have to go in a little bit of an, at an angle to clear. Now, when you're putting this back on, you might notice that it's really tight and you might be having difficulties getting the bolts back in to get your louvers installed. We had a pretty rough time as well. In order to alleviate that, we loosened the bolts here we actually had to take them out and then uh, this piece here along the bottom, you can then move it around a little bit. There are some tabs that push into the bumper like this one here. I did have to take those tabs out of the bumper and I just hit them flat with a hammer. And by doing so though, that gives us the clearance we need so we can get all the bolts started. So I started the bolts up through our louver into that plate. And then I went ahead and left these loose until all of them were started and then we can go back and tighten them down. Now these ones here you can see are going to be pretty difficult to get to. You're probably going to need a wrench to get to those. But we can get to these ones here. And then we'll grab our 10 millimeter wrench to tighten those last ones down. Now that our base plate is fully installed on the vehicle, we can go back and rehook up all the wiring and reroute that. So make sure you put all your push pins and connectors back on that hold your wiring in place and then plug in all the components. We've now marked out our fascia to trim so that way our base plate arms can go in. You can see there, we're gonna just use some tin snips to cut these. You could also use a rotary wheel um, or a razor knife, whichever works best for you, as each one will work. Just the method on how you cut it is gonna be slightly different. And what I like to do here, instead of cutting up there right away, I like to get this mess out of my way, so I'll just trim that like that. For these smaller sections, a pair of side cutters might be a little bit easier. You can get a little more finesse in there when cutting these out. And what I like to do at the very end to make it all nice and neat is I'll take a file and clean up all the edges. We're just kind of getting out the bulk material with our cutters here, and then we can make it look pretty with our file. And you can see here with the file, you can really get in there in the grooves and clean those out and make them look nice. Once you've got everything cleaned out and you're satisfied with it, you can take it over to your vehicle Line it up, dry fit it, and if you need to make any more trims, you can go ahead and trim those out now. Depending on the components you're adding to your flat toe setup, you may or may not need to trim more than we have here. For an example, if your motorhome has air brakes and you're using the Air Force One system, you'd have an air connector at the front to plug your airline into between your vehicle and your motorhome. So you just wanna have all those things on there, plan it out, and then test fit it to make sure it's gonna fit and trim out for those components as necessary. We're now back at the front of the vehicle and we've completed all the rest of our flat toe installation parts that we wanted to put on, which includes our braking system and our dodd wiring. We've got all that stuff routed up here to the front so we can test fit our fascia and put it back on now. I like to hook the top first. This way it keeps itself from falling off and you can't drop it. I also wanna make sure we get all of our hoses and everything out from underneath of there. We don't wanna trap anything. And now, before you start snapping things back in, you wanna come down here and just check. We cut out for the holes here, but anything that you added, you're gonna to need to trim for those. Now, I've already got it trimmed out and checked it. You can see here, we clear for our safety chain loops. We've got a much cleaner little cut over here on this side, because this is just for our safety chain there. On this side, we had to make it a little larger to accommodate our breakaway switch. And there is uh, another hole here for our six-way this one, though, is going to be nice and covered up. So once you've got that all trimmed out, 
you can then snap in all your panels and then put all your fasteners in in reverse order of how we remove them. And that completes our installation of Roadmaster's Direct Connect base plate on our 2017 Smart for Two.